Let's go. Yes, the world. Bow down. Bow down.
in promised land. My name is Rachel Obona. I want to thank God for his protection. Two weeks ago, at about midnight, there was fire incident in the flat beneath mine. The occupant had been away for months, so it wasn't noticed on time. But the moment an alarm was raised, we got help and the fire was put out. Thank God no life was lost. Praise God. Good morning, Promised Land. I had a change of job in December 2019 as the head of sales for a new firm. Fast forward to March 2020. Just three months into the job, COVID happened and we were all forced to work from home. I couldn't visit my clients for sales engagements and I was afraid that could be the end of my relevance at work. I prayed to God for revelations for my company so it could survive the impact of the pandemic since it is in the finance sector. As God would have it, the God who makes straight every crooked place and has the hearts of kings in his hands, we did not just survive, we thrived. We made the highest sales during the pandemic and recorded over 130% growth in our AUM. I called him Obatin Romolaju Shadjo Modajo in December during my testimony, just to let you know, family, that he remains who he is. Praise God. Father, we just want to thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you for the privilege and honor to come before you and offer a sacrifice of praise and worship. Lord, we just want you to know we love you. Thank you for bringing us even to the beginning of another month, the beginning of the month of August, the year you've established 2020. Lord, we want to say we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Please accept our worship. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Hallelujah. We want to go into a session of prayer this morning and to set the tone for our prayer. I want us to please open our Bibles or follow on the screen. Psalm 103, I'll read from verse 1 to 6. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, 
who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. In the times that we're in, it's very easy for us to be oblivious of the grace and the mercy and the blessings of God. But the psalmist here says, Bless the Lord, all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Brethren, that you are alive today is an opportunity for you to offer thanks unto him. And that's why this morning, I want to lead us in a session of thanksgiving. And it's fittingly so because this is a thanksgiving Sunday. And our lips shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And so the first thing I want us to do this morning is to bless the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. That he has brought you and I this far. Say, Father, I bless you, O God. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you have brought me this far even in the month of August the year 2020 let's bless him oh Lord I just want to bless your holy name I want to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto you father you have brought me this far bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name Bless the Lord and don't forget any of his benefits. Father Lord, I thank you. You have brought me this far. And I do not take it for granted, O oh God. Oh Father, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. I worship you, O oh God. I give you all praise and all the glory. I give you all honor and adoration. Please accept my worship. Accept my thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Say in the attitude of thanksgiving, I want us to thank God for healing. This is a season when we have been plagued. We have been, there's a plague upon the land, not just our land, upon the nations of the world. I know some people have been afflicted and God has healed them. Unfortunately, some have not been so fortunate, but we are comforted that those ones are with the Lord. But for those of us who are alive, especially those who have been recipients of his healing, maybe healing from COVID or any other ailments, there's a tendency for us to forget that there are other ailments still very much with us. But the Bible says he's the one that heals us of our diseases. So you are going to lift up a, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Even if you are walking in divine health, is a function of the Lord. Say, Father! I thank you. I thank you for healing me of all physical, all spiritual, and all emotional afflictions. Thank him even right now for healing. Father, you hear the ones that heals. Your name is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that heals. I do not take it for granted, oh God. Lord, you are the one who is my healer. You are the Lord God, my healer. Jehovah, Lord God, Rapha. You are the Lord that heals me. Oh, yes, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And that song just came into my spirit. So if you are a recipient of God's healing, either in the recent past or you are a recipient of divine healing, I just want you to please join me in this song. You are the Lord that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. 
Paradventure, you are there. You need a touch from God this morning. I want you to reach out by faith and sing that song from the depths of your heart. And I know that he'll see you virtue will reach you even in your city room, on your sick bed, wherever you are. So sing along with me right now. You are the Lord that he left me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. the Lord that he left me you are the Lord my healer you sent your word and you healed my disease you are the Lord my healer Yes, Father, you are the Lord, our healer. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You forgive our iniquities, oh God. Is there anyone there who is a recipient of God's mercy? I want you to raise up your voice and say, Lord, thank you for having mercy on me. Thank you for not dealing with me according to that which I deserve. Raise up your voice and just thank him for his mercy. Father, thank you, Father, Lord, because you forgive all my iniquities. Your word says, oh God, if we confess our sins unto you, you are faithful and just, not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I thank you, Heavenly Father, because I'm a recipient of your mercy. Thank God for his mercy. Lord, you are merciful unto me oh god you have not dealt with me according to that which i deserve oh lord even in my unfaithfulness you remain faithful father even in my wavering you remain steadfast oh god even in my shortcomings oh god you cover my nakedness oh god i want to thank you almighty god i bless your holy name i give you praise in the name of jesus in jesus precious name we have given thanks amen still in the attitude of thanksgiving he says he redeems our lives from destructions many the bible says ten thousand shall fall by our side and a thousand by our right hand but none shall come near you thank god for he's delivered you from destruction thank god for preserving you from the plague father i thank you oh god for preserving me and my household from destruction oh god and from the plague almighty god father lord god i am so grateful blessed be your glorious name in jesus mighty name we pray finally i want us to thank god for his tender mercies and his loving kindness father lord i thank you almighty god for your tender mercy and your kindness unto me thank you heavenly father in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. And so, Father, in continuation in this season of thanksgiving, we offer our prayers of thanks unto you. Thank you, Lord, that despite all that is going on all around, Father, Lord, you are still remain strong on our behalf. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us loving kindness and tender mercy. Thank you for all your benefits. Thank you for forgiving us all our iniquities. Thank you for redeeming our lives from destruction. Thank you for renewing us every day, making us mount up with wings as eagle. Thank you for provision. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed amen hallelujah well i just want to thank god for the privilege that we always have to be able to come before him to offer prayers and it's my belief that the lord will answer your prayer and answer my prayer it's my pleasure to introduce a very special 
uh, father in the house, one of the fathers of faith in the redeemed Christian Church of God, is going to be ministering the word to us this morning. I know you'll be blessed, and I just want you to be attentive and open your hearts in faith. It's my privilege and honor to invite right now Pastor Peter Olawale, the special assistant to the general overseer on prayers. God bless you even as you listen in. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Our Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy, Lord, to be magnified. Our Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Our Prince of Peace, our Lord of Lords, our backbone, our fortress, our hope, our desire and Messiah. We want to say thank you for preservation of lives throughout all the crises we have passed through all over the world. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your backings. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for being there all the time. Thank you for making yourself available in the affairs of our lives. Take all glory in the name of Jesus. I'm asking today that all your children that are connected to this message, this hour, give them rest and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Let it be a, the salvation today. Let there be healings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our text is taken from Acts chapter 12, verse 6. Act of Apostle, chapter 12, verse 6. And when Herod will have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. We are considering a message today titled Rest in the Midst of Crisis. Let me give you a little background of the passage we have just read. Peter had just been arrested after they had beheaded James. And right there, because of the festivity that was going on, they had to keep Peter in prison for that night. And they kept Peter in the inner prison with soldiers all around with sophisticated weapons of their day. Not only that he, he was surrounded by soldiers, but he was bound hands and One would have thought that that night, Peter will have sleepless night because one of the dangers of being in trouble is inability to sleep. What could therefore help Peter to sleep in the midst of crisis this way? What actually happened to him that despite the crisis, Peter was able to sleep? That is what we are looking at. So if we go to Peter, Peter, why could you sleep in the midst of crisis? Number one, Peter will say, Jesus spoke to me. So Jesus spoke to him. That's why he could sleep. 
In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 to 19, Matthew 16, verse 18 to 19, Dear your main Peter and Jesus, Jesus told Peter that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell cannot prevail against it. So Peter remembered that message of Jesus that a few days ago, a few months ago, he spoke to me that no gate of hell can prevail over me. He remembered that. He also remembered the word of Jesus that spoke with him in Luke 22, verse 31 to 32, Luke chapter 22, Verse 31 to 32, where Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you so that they can see to us as a we, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail it not. Peter remembered that, that Jesus prayed for me and that I'm coming out of it because Jesus told me, when thou art being comforted, strengthen thy brethren. So it is a matter of just a period, I'm not going to actually perish here. He remembered also the word of Jesus that Jesus spoke to him in John chapter 21. Probably that word will happen to be one of those words that made him to sleep. Jesus told him in that John chapter 21, verse 18 to 19, Peter. You are young now. The time is coming when you'll be old. In fact, people will begin to take you to wherever you cannot go. Peter remembered a few days ago, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, Jesus told me I'm young now, but I'll be old. That means I'm not going to die tomorrow. Because if the Lord Jesus has said, I will be old, then they can't kill me. That is what the word that Peter remembered, Jesus spoke to him. I want you to pray prayer before we move on. Say, Jesus, I need a word from you. Speak into my life. Speak into my destiny. Speak into my marriage. Speak into my future. Speak, Lord, speak. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Lord, I need a word from you. Speak a word. You spoke to Peter. That is the reason why Peter will have rest in the midst of crisis. Speak a word to me. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, what will make Peter to sleep in the midst of crisis? Number two. He knew because Jesus spoke to him that the closed door will be opened miraculously because the one who spoke with me is the door. That gave him rest. That the one who spoke with me is the door himself. He told Peter, Peter was there when Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 9, John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man entered in, he shall be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. Also in John chapter 10, verse 7. John chapter 10, verse 7. Peter was there when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. So he knew, no matter how strong the door, no matter how large the door, no matter how effective the door that have been closed against me, the one who has spoke with me is the door. And he can open any door anytime. That gave him rest. I'm trusting the Almighty God, like Peter who will remember that Jesus is the door. Number three, that made Peter to have rest in the midst of crisis is that. He remembered that Jesus spoke to him. Therefore, there will be solution in the midst of this current crisis because the one 
who spoke with me is the answer. He had this word and he knew that Jesus Christ himself is the answer. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, Deuteronomy 29, 29, there we find out that the Almighty God secret belongs to him and he knows what to do anytime. He had the answer in his hand. So no matter what we are passing through now, the one we are serving, the one we have decided to follow, the one who children we are, is the answer. And I'm trusting the Almighty God that we answer us in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, what could make Peter have rest in the midst of crisis? He remembered that the dark moment will soon be over because the one who spoke to me is the light. He knew that, oh, the dark moment I'm passing through now, it will soon be over because the one who spoke to me is the light. He was there when Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8, verse 12, John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Peter was there. Not only that, he, had, he was right there. Nobody told him that. He had it directly from the mouth of Jesus. When Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. I don't know the light, that moment you are passing through. The law we are talking about is the light. It will say light into your destiny. It will say light into your ways. Because he delight, no darkness can withstand him. Number six, so that we can pray. Why Peter could have rest in the midst of crisis? Because when he remembered the word of Jesus, he now came to a conclusion that the soldiers around me will soon be disappointed. Because the one who spoke with me is the Lord of hosts, the mighty man in battle. They could not be terrorized by the appearance of the soldiers or those were with sophisticated weapons that particular day because he knew right away the Lord Jesus who spoke to him happened to be the Lord of hosts, the mighty man in battle. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 3, Exodus 15, verse 3, there the word of God says, the Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. Uh, no matter the battles we are fighting now, no matter the battles we are passing through, there's someone who is standing by us, there's somebody, someone who is right there by our side, his name is the Lord, a man of war, and is ready again and again to fight our battle for us. Number six, what helped Peter that day that he could have rest in the midst of crisis is that he knew that the chains would soon be broken because the one who spoke with me is the giver of freedom. He knew that one. Oh, all the chains will soon be broken because the Lord Jesus Christ who spoke to me is the one who has freedom in his hand. He was there when Jesus spoke in John chapter 8, verse 36. John chapter 8, verse 36. When Jesus Christ said, In the Son, therefore, shall make you free, Yes, I'll be free indeed. So Peter was there all through that time. So he knew no matter the chain, no matter the bondage, no matter whatever every any woman be trying to uh, cage me with, I'm coming out because the one who spoke to me is the freedom himself, is the gift of freedom. Let me conclude. Number seven, why Peter could rest in the midst of crisis is simply because he remembered the word of Jesus and he came into a conclusion that I will overcome because the one who spoke with me is right here by my side. 
he remembered when Jesus Christ told him right away in Matthew chapter 8, verse 20. Matthew chapter 8, verse 20. Peter was there when Jesus Christ said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So Peter was there that when Jesus Christ said, We are ready you go, I'm going to be with you. That is the reason why Serubabe had the confidence to speak out when he said, Who are you? Oh, mountain, before Serubabe, it will definitely become a plague because the Lord spoke to him in Naga chapter 2, verse 4 I am with you, said the Lord of hosts. So that gave Peter the confidence to speak and to have confidence in having rest even in the midst of crisis. And like Peter, the Almighty God has made a promise for his own people. Let me say this before we begin to pray. What gave Peter that particular rest was the fact that it belonged to the Lord Jesus Christ. If there is anyone without Christ, any time any crisis appears, definitely there will be no solution for any crisis without Jesus Christ. So if you want to have rest in the midst of crisis, there is somebody called Jesus Christ, He's the only one who can give us rest. So before we begin to pray today, because in the next few minutes we want to pray, I want you to Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only one who can calm any storm of life. So without Christ, there will be crisis. But we are ever that in Jesus Christ, crisis will be over. And I'm thanking God for you that to listen to this message today, rest in the midst of crisis. So if you are there, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, I would like to pray for you before the general prayer. So say after me, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this hour. You have spoken to me. I know you are the only solution for the crisis of my life and for the crisis of mankind. As I've heard your word today, I surrender my life to you. Lord, let your blood Clear my sins away. Let my name be written in the book of life. And the great to serve you to the end. Release upon my life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you have made that declaration with all your heart, you certainly discover that rest has come into your soul, if in the midst of crisis. The rest of us, let call upon the name of the Lord right away and began to bless the name of the Lord who had decided to speak into your life. Thank him today. Bless his holy name. Magnify him because our Lord speaks and again and again he still speaks to his own people. Begin to bless his holy name. Begin to bless his holy name. And call upon him again. Lord, please speak into my life, speak into my marriage. Lord, we sustain me in the midst of half rest. Speak into my life, oh Lord. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that prayer with all your soul. Correct up a panic Santa Yaba. Leporica send you. Lord, pray, Lord. Give me rest. Give me rest in the midst of crisis. Give me rest. Give me rest. You have told me clearly. You have told me without missing word that if I follow you, I will have rest for my soul. If I believe you, I will have rest for my soul. I have put my trust in you, God. Give me rest. Give me rest. Give me rest. Offer all circumstances of this life. Give me rest. Both for two men abroad. Give me rest. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kindly lift up your hands with our eyes closed as I'm going to make certain declaration into our life. I speak into our lives today 
that in the name of Jesus, starting from this moment, the presence of God will go with you. His power will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit himself will order your steps. The grace of the Almighty God will be sufficient for you in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life that the hand of God will be with you and upon all the members of your family all over in the mighty name of Jesus. In that name that is above every other name, the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding will begin to dominate your life. You will experience uncommon favor, uncommon progress. The grace of our Heavenly Father that made the day break will make you break through and break new grounds without strength in the mighty name of Jesus. From this moment onward, you will not break down. In this year 2020, the Almighty God Himself will empower you to do great exploit beyond your imagination. I speak into your life today that your hope, your dreams, your expectations will not be cut short, but by the special grace of God, they will all be translated into testimonies. By His grace, you will not labor in vain. Your efforts shall be fruitful and be rewarded. And I speak into your life today that above all, the almighty God himself will give you rest. Rest in your body, rest in your domain, rest in your office, rest in your home, rest everywhere. Therefore, whatever Jesus that you have decided to obey, we set to free in Jesus' name. I speak into your body. Any form of sickness that will not give you rest is thereby terminated in Jesus' name. I speak into your destiny. Any form of stress that will not give you rest is thereby removed in Jesus' name. Every cloud around your life, every cloud before you, Every cloud behind you that will not give you rest will hereby disappear in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life and to your destiny that in the name that is above every other name, Jesus, you begin to rest, to have rest that you desire, that you need in your life. Scatter is over and that in the life of Peter. In the same way, you begin to hear his words and remember his words. It is settled already in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. I am so sure you've been blessed by the word of life from Pastor Peter Olawale. And I just want to concur that everything that has proceeded from this altar unto you every word of prophecy every proclamation shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus you will overcome this season you will overcome this crisis songs of rejoicing and praise will not cease from your mouth in Jesus precious name I pray well we want to immediately go into a session of praise before the Lord and please I want to encourage you that irrespective of where you are or your disposition just command your soul command your spirit being that today I am going to offer quality worship and praise unto my God in your sitting rooms in your bedrooms wherever you find yourself right now i want you to just come with a garment of thanksgiving and praise because god has been good 
and his mercy continues to endure forever. You know, the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, it says, Out of the mouth of babes have you ordained strength that we cause to overcome your enemies. And who are babes? Children of the Lord. And out of our mouths shall come songs of praise. So today, as you worship the Lord, as you sing and dance before him, I am so confident that God will arise and rejoice over you. Amen. So uh, please, let's be attentive. Let's prepare ourselves as praise for one. Our in-house choir will be leading us in a session of praise. Um, as, as we do that also, we use the opportunity to give our thanksgiving offering, our tithes, and our various obligations as the Lord will lay upon our hearts. You will see it on the screens being scrolled from time to time in this period of thanksgiving. God bless you even as you praise your God in freedom and liberty. Your love, your mercy, and your act forever. Jehovah, I don't know.
And so, Father, once again, we just present ourselves before you despite our circumstances because we acknowledge, oh God, that you are our portion in the land of the living. Lord, just as Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel raise a sacrifice of praise unto you in the time of trouble, and Father, and you in turn, you arose in your might even to sort out all their problems. I pray for as many, O oh God, have been able to offer one form of praise or thanksgiving to you. 
either through the lips, through their dance, and through the giving, oh God, I pray you will arise up down their behalf. Father, you accept all these expressions of worship. And Lord God Almighty, you fight the battles of your children. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Well, it's time for us to listen in for latest developments within the church and without. It's time for us to take Promised Land News. Please stay tuned and God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday, Promised Land. Good to have you all join our online chat today. I'm sure you had an amazing Thanksgiving experience. My name is Tino Philippe Sudoufie, and this is Promised Land News. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. And I want all people all over the world to know that this, for this special convention, the theme of which is wonderful, I'm going to be on the following station that you will see on your screen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. The children's church remains online. Did your kids join the service last week Sunday? We learnt about the parable of the hidden treasure. Join the children's church online this Sunday by 11.30 a.m. You can start a watch party on YouTube and share the links to the service. Remember, do not join alone. Invite someone. As we continue to pray and fight against COVID-19, Please note that the church is always available to provide relief materials to the vulnerable among us during this pandemic. Please call our help team on 0806-942-3510 or send an email to info at rccgpromiseland.org. Our weekly services are as follows. Sunrise Workers Meeting on Zoom at 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Sunday School on Zoom as well at 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Inspire Service is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Sunrise Service is 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And Children's Church is 11.30 a.m. to 12 noon. Inspire Workers Meeting is 12 noon to 1 p.m. The Teens Church Meeting on Zoom holds every Sunday at 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Digging Deep is on Zoom as well and holds every Tuesday by 6.30 and Faith Clinic on Zoom every Thursday by 6.30 p.m. Meeting links will be shared through all our communication platforms. And still give your offerings, tithes and other donations on our online platform at www.lccgpromiseland.org. You can also make transfers to Promised Land accounts with Zeni Bank as follows. Tithes. 101-365-1975 Offering 101-365-1968 Oasis 101-082-9054 Can 101-350-6123 Stay up to date with happenings around us through all our social media platforms at RCCG Promised Land and Inspire RCCG PL. Like, share, and comment on all our posts. As you go into this week, remember God's promise in Isaiah 43. Do not dwell on the past. God is doing a new thing. Now we shall spring forth. Do you not perceive it? Because a God will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. We pray for you. 
Your life in this month of August and beyond will be an expression of God's supernatural grace. Keep believing and have a glorious week. This is Promised Land, the place of your fulfillment. Once again, we've come to the end of what you will agree with me has been a glorious service. And I just know that this season of Thanksgiving will not be just for today. It will follow you throughout this month and throughout the months ahead to the end of this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Just to remind you that this week, we enter into our annual convention and you'll be able to join through the Dove uh, television on DFS, DSTV, I beg your pardon, and also through the various uh, social media and online platforms. Uh, please, let's be a season of refreshing and reconnection uh, with the family of faith, even through the cyberspace. Uh, because of that, we won't be having our regular services um, on Tuesday and Thursday. But by the grace of God, come next Sunday, we shall have uh, regular services again. Until then, I just want to commit you into the hands of the Almighty God. Please repeat after me these words of faith and say, Father, I thank you once again because, oh God, I am your son, I am your daughter. Thank you, Lord, for putting praise in my heart and I'm bringing it back to you. Lord, I am so confident that as I continuously praise you, you will fight all my battles. Oh God, arise and let all your enemies represented around me and in me be scattered in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Until we see you again next Sunday, I commend you into God's faithful hands. God bless you and have a wonderful, victorious week ahead. Amen. Stretch out your hands, come on. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. Bow down.